according to Sayyid Sistani, the people of the book, meaning the Christians and Jews, are considered Tahir. Tahir. So if the cook is a Christian or Jews, he is as Tahir as Muslim. Okay? Now we do have some other scholars like Sayyid al Khu'i who believes that people of the book are Najis. But Sayyid Ali Sistani, Sayyid Muhammad Hussein Fallallah, Sheikh Nasser Makarim, we have several marja' today who believe that the people of the book are Tahir, unless, unless their hand is Najis, not because they are people of the book. So his hand had urine, for example, or blood in it. So it's Najis, not because he is a people of book, but because of another Najasa. No, we're assuming his hand is clean. Is he Najis? No. Therefore, the food he gives me, I can consider Tahir. Let's go one step further. What if the cook is a non Ahl al Kitab? He is a Buddhist, or he's a Hindu, or he's a Baha'i. So, what about this food he's offering me? Okay, there is a golden rule in Islam. The reason I say golden rule because it makes it a lot easier for Muslims. What is it? It says, Kullu Kullu shay'in Laka tahir Hatta Ta'lam Everything Everything is Tahir until you know otherwise. So, I have this coffee. It could be Najis, it could be Tahir, right? How do I know? So, this golden ruling says it is Tahir. Unless you know, you see there is blood in it or urine in it. Anything that you doubt. Now, if this guy, the Buddhist who offered me the food, again, I'm not talking about those three, rem remember. Any food other than those three, he gave me this food, I can consider it Tahir. How do I know he touched it? How do I know he touched it with his wet hand? Remember, what, what makes it Najis is not touching it. Touching it with a wet hand, where it is, there is a transmission of moisture from and to, from the non-Muslim to the food or from the food to the non-Muslim. Transition, transmission of moisture. I don't know if he, when he was preparing, he really touched it with his wet hand. Maybe he was wearing gloves. How do I know? Since I don't know, I have not seen him with my eyes, I consider that to be Tahir. I apply this golden rule. Now, is there a possibility that he touched it? Yeah, there is. There is 80% he touched the food with his wet hand. But remember what this says. Read what it says. <laughs> Everything is Tahir until you know. You know. Do I know? No. Yeah, there is 70% chance. But 70% chance is not. Is what? You're, you don't know. You still do not know. You're not certain. When you become certain, 100%, then you know it's nudges. Before 100%, you apply this rule. It's still Tahir. Okay? Now, be it Buddhist or Christian, it doesn't matter. As long as I did not see it. Now, do I have to go inside the kitchen and inspect? No, you don't have to. See, Islam is trying to make it easy on you. Sit in your place. Don't go and inspect in the kitchen. Now, do I need to ask the cook, Mr. Cook, Mr. Buddhist, did you touch this food with your hand? No, I don't have to. You don't have to investigate. This investigation process is not mandatory. It's not necessary. Allah tells me, don't worry about it. Eat it. Unless you see it. 
I'm just going inside the kitchen to wash my hand, for example, or in my way to the bathroom, I noticed that his wet hand was touching the food. Now it's a different story. As long as I have not seen, I don't know, I still consider the food offered to me by a non-Muslim, be it a Christian, Jew, or Buddhist, or Hindu, or any, any religion, halal, halal, tahir, I'm sorry, tahir, pure, therefore I can eat it.